The message you're about to listen to is by Reverend Dr. Femi Olaleye of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. We're going to be answering the woman question today. Should women preach the gospel? Should women preach the gospel? I can tell you, for example, that um, the way church looks today and the way I'm still recognizing church after one week is the and the work of women. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God for women. But let's just go to the world first. Amen. All right. So is there an agenda against women in the New Testament church? When we read the words of Paul, we seem to get that idea. We seem to, it seems to look as though Paul had some form of patriarchy, all right, in his writings. Some folks believe that because of the tone of his writing when he came to, when he concerns women and ministry. But we need to answer that question because many times as you go about preaching the gospel, you're going to have people ask questions like, why is it that you guys have women pastors or female pastors? How many of you have had ask people ask you questions like that, all right? So you're going to see, and people are going to ask you questions like that, and it's always good for you to be able to have an answer from the Scriptures, properly explained why, all right, the Bible um, is not against women preaching the Gospel. Now look at Joel chapter number 225. Joel chapter 225, in Joel 225, we have the prophecy by Prophet Joel, all right, about um, the... Um, the spirit being poured out on all flesh. Can we have it on the screen? Joel 2.25. It says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts are hitting the cankerworm and the caterpillar, and the palmer were my great army which I sent among you. One of these days we're going to look at all this, that my great army. All right. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now, verse 27. Now, 27 says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. All right. It's mentioned twice. That is Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation, all right, to them who are Christ, in Christ Jesus. Shame is legalistic. It's a legal terminology, all right? That is um, shame that speaks about being guilty, all right, being looked down on and being seen as failures and um, um, being seen as, you know, um, criminals. Now, look how it says. It says, and I shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh-huh. And your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now notice, it says, and your sons and your daughters shall what? Shall prophesy. To prophesy means to preach. Hallelujah. To prophesy means to speak, to announce God's plans, his intents and purposes. That's what it means to prophesy. And in the fact, the very first fact, all right, all right, um, women are not excluded of it. It means that women are going to be part and parcels of the what? Executors of God's divine purposes and plans. And I, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So sons and daughters shall prophesy. It shows us that in God's grand plan, men and women, as, men, as much as men, all right, are central to the spread of God's work. They are central to the spread of the gospel message. You say your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And when you look at the fulfillment of this in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, all right, Acts 2, verse 1 to 4, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it sat upon each of them verse 4 everybody we want to go it says what and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to what speak with what other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance he says and they were all filled with the holy ghost now who were these all that were filled with the spirit of god this all that were filled with the Spirit of God included men and women, as we see in Acts of Apostles chapter number 1 and verse 13. In fact, in this all, included in this all, was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now look at it, it says, And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, 
and Thomas Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judah, the brother of James. Now, verse 14, everybody read, want to go? It says what? This all continued with one accord in what? Prayer and what? Supplication. With what? The women. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his burial. Notice, it says, with the women. So that means there were a group of women who were part of the 120, who went into the upper room and continued in prayer and supplications with the disciples. Hallelujah. All right, so we had the women, and you had Mary, the mother of Jesus, and you had the brethren of Jesus. Let me also add here, whoever is good enough to pray and supplicate is good enough to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the women were among those who preached in Acts 2. They were in the upper room, all right? Women were, all right, in the upper room, and the women also got filled with the Holy Ghost, and they were among those who preached the gospel in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. Now, but we're going to answer the question why it actually seemed as though there were not women that were among the 12 disciples initially. We're going to have to answer the question, all right, why it looked as though, all right, um, we didn't have more women, all right, who were in the forefront in, of ministry, all right, in Scripture. We're going to also answer the question why it was, um, it seems as though we didn't have a woman who wrote an epistle. All right, in the scriptures. So we're going to answer those questions. All right, and you'll find that all of those things had nothing to do with God. Hallelujah! He had a lot to do with what the kind of society, all right, um, um, that they were in back then. Now, all right, suffice you to know that the first person who saw Jesus after he rose from the dead was a woman. The first person who saw Jesus have a rose from there was a woman. The first person who went to tell, in fact, let me even give you the gist. The first person who saw Jesus after he rose from there was a woman. The first persons to see Jesus after he rose from there were women. <laughs> I can assure you that it was not a it was not an accident that it was women, all right, that first saw Jesus. Now, if you turn your Bible to back, Matthew chapter 28, from verse 1. Matthew chapter 28 and from verse 1. Quickly, this was resurrection morning. Look at what he says. He says, in the, in, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Next verse. He says, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. For... He now says, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Verse 5, everybody read, one, two, go. What does he say? And the angel answered and said unto the women, fear not ye, for I know that he seek Jesus, which was what? Crucified. Next verse. He says, he is not here, for he is what? Reason, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Seven. And go quickly and tell his disciples. Who did the angel say go quickly to? The women. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Next verse. All right. Next verse, it says, And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring the disciples' word. Next verse. And as, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Verse 10. And I said, then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they what? See me. So Jesus saw women before he saw brethren. He saw them first. Look at Mark 16, 2. Mark 16, 2. It says, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Verse 3. Everybody read. It says what? All right. Um, and they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Verse 4. You know, that's amazing. Women are so amazing. They, these women went to the sepulchre wanting to anoint the body of Jesus because it was that according to Jewish practice, the dead bodies were anointed on the third day. You understand? But they had forgotten that Mary had anointed Jesus before he died, which meant that that 
ceremonial anointing was not going to be necessary because Jesus Christ said, "You have done." She has done this for my what? My burial. All right. Because on the third day, when they were supposed to anoint his body, he will rise from the dead. And because he was going to rise from the dead, it would mean that the ceremonial washing and anointing that they needed to do had already been done prophetically by Mary. You understand that? Now, so they go there not knowing how they were going to roll away the stone. But they just go there. You see, one thing about love for Jesus is many a times when you love Jesus, you're going to do certain things that other people will call stupid. If you have never done anything for the Lord that people call you stupid for, we can put a big question mark on whether or not you love Jesus or not. They didn't think about who was going to roll away the stone. They just said, no, we are going. Hallelujah. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Verse 5, the angel had rolled away. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. Verse 6, it says what? And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Verse 7. It says, but go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he said unto you. So we have two witnesses in Matthew and Mark, all right, that shows us that women were the first to see Jesus. Hallelujah. And were the first that were given instruction to go and tell that they had seen Jesus. Women. Glory to God. Such that angels sent women to the apostles of Christ. If, the, if women were the first, if God counted women to be the very first to see the resurrected Christ, and if God did not have any issue with women being the ones to relay the news of his resurrection, God has no problem with men in ministry. Hallelujah. If God could look at women and say they are fit enough to tell this important news, then there's not, God has no problem with my ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here was the problem. And let me tell you what, it, it, it's a problem. Uh, and, it, and many times, many people miss it because we don't understand the historical context, all right, of the early, um, the church, all right, at, um, you know, during the time of Jesus and, and before, all right. The problem was, all right, witness of women around the time of Jesus wasn't readily believed. It wasn't readily believed because if you see in Mark 16, verse 10 to 11, you will find out that when these women went and told the disciples, relayed what had happened in accordance with what the angels told them to do, in accordance with what Jesus told them to do, the Bible says that the disciples did not believe them. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, what happened? Believed not. They didn't believe the woman. <laughs> they didn't believe. Praise God. Look at Saint Luke 24. From verse 6. They didn't believe the woman. Then Luke 24 and verse 6. He's not here, but he's risen. Remember, I spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Verse 7. Let's read the story. All right. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and thought they rise again. 28 and um, verse 8. Then they remember these words. 9. Keep going. And they returned and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Verse 10. He says, it was Mary Magdalene and Johanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Can you see the number of women that were there? Told them. We saw him, oh, we saw angels, oh, how far this is, this, the Lord is risen. Look at what he says in verse 11. Everybody we want to, he says what? And their words seemed to them as what? I do tales. You know, they just thought it was some of those things we know women are easily deceived, you know, and very emotional. <laughs> and there was seemed to them as I do tales, and they believed them not. So it, the issue wasn't that God didn't want to use the women. The issue was most women 
um, most women, uh, most men at the time would not receive the witness of women. They couldn't, they didn't receive their ministry. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. And they believed them not. That's why God is raising women these days and times, women of power. If you don't believe them for their words, you will believe it when you see the miracles. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2021, God is raising ministries. Hallelujah. Led by women, female women. Hallelujah. They won't come and be talking about my husband and my, you understand, my children. They won't be talking about how to get the man. No, these ones will raise the dead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This one will heal the they will speak to men and to women. Holy Ghost is not, uh, how do I put this now? There is neither male nor female in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And you must understand something about ministry gift. As I'm going to show you, the ministry gift is not male or female. It's genderless. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is not inhibited by women's periods. And their body parts. So you say, ah, no, ah, ah. Oh, I, can't, I can't move in this one. No, ah, she, she sees her prayer. Ah, no, I can't. No, 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 no. Uh uh. Holy Ghost has no problem using women. And as you can see, he is using them. The problem is that men, all right, in scriptures here, found it difficult to receive their ministry. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Look at verse 21 of the same Luke 24. 24, 21. look at what they said on the road to Emmaus with Jesus. Look at how they gave the reports of what the women said. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all these, today is the third day since these things were done. 20, uh, next verse. Yeah, look at it. He says, yeah, and certain women, also of our company, made us astonished. Made us raving mad. Which were early at the sepulchre. 23, he says what? And when they found not his body, they came saying that they, that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. You see how they reported it? Praise God. Which means that if Jesus had not appeared to those men, they would have called the resurrection of Jesus Christ the idle tales of women. Can you imagine? The problem was in God. The problem is in God. The problem is actually what? The men. Isn't that the problem still today? Hallelujah. They didn't believe the women. Hallelujah. I pray for every woman here listening on that my voice. God is going to make you a credible witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. With signs and wonders following. Women, why are you saying amen like that? The men won't say amen for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Credible. Jesus never had a problem using women. God doesn't have a problem using women. But the Bible lets us know, all right, the very first woman, the very first person to take a city, so to speak, to cause a city to gather around Jesus was a woman. St. John's Gospel chapter 4. I can tell you something, it is easier to get women to take a city than men. While a miracle is happening and men are trying to understand how the miracle happened, women have gone to tell it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They've gone to tell it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Look at St. John's chapter 4, verse 27. This woman at the well did not receive a miracle. She wasn't blind and started seeing, no. She wasn't deaf and started hearing, no. That was not it. She had a conversation with Jesus, and Jesus just told her gist about her life. Give her just a few sprinklings of word of knowledge. <clears throat> Nothing serious. Are you following? Just to, like, you know, salt. Word of, a little word of knowledge there, a little word of knowledge there. Just like that. That's what he gave her. <laughs> now hold on now I want you to notice verse 27 of John 4 I want you to look at it read that verse again he says and upon this came his what disciples and did what that what did you understand <laughs> do you understand 
He says, and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. They marveled that he talked with a woman. Do you understand? There, there was a, the, the, you know, back then, the, you know, because of the society and the way it was, there was a way they saw women. But you must be able to differentiate between the way men, all right, and society treated women and the way Jesus treated women. Hallelujah. In Christ, we see an elevation of the woman, hallelujah, to a divine status and purpose. Amen. So a woman was for the defeat of Satan because it was through a woman Christ came into the world. A woman. A woman. In fact, when you study, you find that two women, you had Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, both of whom were responsible for raising the men that would change history. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Two women. Two women. Hallelujah. And these ones came and were marveling that he talked with a woman. <laughs> Yet no man said, what's the case that or why talkest thou with that? They should have tried it. Verse 28. It now says, the woman then left a water pot and went away into the city and said to the men. 29. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Next verse. He now says, then they went out of the city and came unto him. So you see, the witness of this woman was received. And once the witness of the woman was received, the entire city turned to Jesus to hear him themselves. Now, what was the difference between this city, hallelujah, and um, the disciples? This was Samaria, hallelujah. They were a, 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 a community of people who were not totally to the law of Moses, who didn't have all those rules and stuff like that. They had a semblance, a form of it. Hallelujah. So they had a different attitude to women than the Jews did. Praise God. Praise God. Such that when she came and told them, this is what this man did to my life, they listened. So what does that tell you? It tells you something. That God would use you, whether you're a man or a woman. Hallelujah. And the challenge with the ministry using women in those days was not God, was actually the audience. They were, there were issues with receiving the ministry of women. Come on, is this clear? Yeah, all right. Now, this is very, very important for us to note. Now, there, is, there are two things you need to note. There is the work of ministry and there is ministry. All right. When we talk about ministry, I'm talking about being called to ministry. That's being called to a ministry office. Then there is being called to the work of ministry. Turn to Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 7. Number 4 and verse 7. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Verse 8, can we read? It says what? Uh, wherefore it said, when he ascended up on high, he led, a captive, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 9. All right, it says... Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into lower parts of the earth? Verse 10, he now says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. 11. And he gave somewhat apostles, uh -huh, and somewhat prophets, and somewhat evangelists, and somewhat pastors, and what teachers. What was the purpose of giving these men? Okay, he says, For the word perfecting of the saints, for the word, work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So that means the apostle, pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist uh, is giving to the body of Christ to perfect the body of Christ for what? The work of the ministry. Now, everybody in the, in the body of Christ, both male and female, glory to God, all right, is um, uh, uh, on fivefold ministry for perfecting for the work of ministry. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So you find in Acts 2, what, the, what we find um, everybody doing there, witnessing, all right, on the day of Pentecost, is the work of ministry. Is that correct? But Peter standing up, 
amongst everybody and being the voice preaching, praise God, shows that he was what? A ministry gift. Are you following what I'm saying? So his ministry gift standing up, but as he was doing the preaching, all the other 120 were also doing the work of ministry. Hallelujah. So are women called to a work of ministry? If women are called to be saints, then they are called to the work of ministry. Is this clear? All right. Now, the question that we now have to ask is this. Can a woman be a ministry gift? Where God will call a woman into the ministry. Do we have examples of this in scripture? The answer is yes, we do. We do. Romans chapter number 16. Romans 16 and verse 7. We have um, an example of an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ who was called, who is called Apostle Junior. Apostle Junior. Salute Andronicus and Junior, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the word apostles who also were in Christ's word before me. Hallelujah. Then we have the um, 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 very, very popular Priscilla. All right, Priscilla. Look at Acts 18.2. You have actually a ministry couple. They were called uh, Aquila and Priscilla. And many times when you look at the story of Aquila and Priscilla, you even find that Priscilla, who is the wife, is mentioned before Aquila. All right? And if you understand biblical, you know, arrangements, you find out that the lead guy comes first. So you have Paul and Silas, right? Paul and what? Barnabas. So when you have that, Paul, what you're saying, Paul and Barnabas, what they're telling you is Paul is the lead guy. Paul is the chief speaker. Amen. Now look at Acts of Apostle chapter number 18 and verse 2. And, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to differ from Rome and came unto them. All right. So, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. Verse 4. He now says, and he was in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So this is the introduction of Paul to Aquila and Priscilla. Now let us now look at Aquila and Priscilla, all right, doing the work of ministry. All right, Aquila and Priscilla doing the work of ministry. Look at Acts of Apostles and chapter number 18 and 26. This is where we have the encounter between Aquila, and Priscilla, and Apollos. All right, he now says, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and what? Expounded unto him the way of God more what? Perfectly. So it was both of them that took an apostle to Apollos and taught him the word. Apollos, he said, ah, how can a woman be teaching me the word? Is that what he said? No. Are you following he didn't reject a ministry because he was a woman. All right, look at the next verse. Um, uh, I want to just look at Romans 16, 3. See how Paul and what called Paul, how Paul addressed Priscilla. All right, in Christ. Priscilla and Aquila, Romans 16, 3. Greet Priscilla. Who is first? Hey, boy, now, talk to me now. Who is first? Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in what? In Christ. Paul calls a woman as helper in Christ. Helper in Christ. Ministry partners. Then also in 1 Corinthians 16, 19, we even find out that they were co-pastors of a church in their house. Before somebody tells you, ah, ah, how can a woman be a pastor? Show them these scriptures. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16, 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you. Much in the Lord. With the church that is where? In their house. Praise God. Praise God. I said praise God. I've actually found out that many times when men have to, when some men people, some people come up and begin to have an issue with women being pastors or women being, you know, 
preachers or stuff like that. I think usually most of those men are insecure when they talk about that. There's an insecurity about it. And there was a woman, um, Katrin Kuhlman. I don't know if you've heard of Katrin Kuhlman. Katrin Kuhlman actually had a lot of face, a lot of flack, all right, all right, from, when, from many men when she was doing ministry. And she had issues for two reasons. Number one, she was divorced. And number two, she was a woman. So do you know how God made up, made up for all those things? He ensured that miracles that were not happening in the ministry of men were happening in that ministry. You see, that's how God will shut people up, miracles. Glory to God. By the time somebody that they don't have was not born with a drum. Glory to God. An air drum becomes created just because a woman just said, <laughs> I know Ketikuma was one God now. The operations of the spirit with that was just weird. You know, all the other men, hey, they will rob, they will lay everything. Back then in the 60s, 70s, Ketikuma would just come. I just say that's the power of the Holy Ghost on you. <laughs> you know, she will walk into, I mean, they told the story that this lady, one time she finished a crusade and um, she was about leaving, but the, the exit was so crowded so she couldn't leave because people wanted to, you know, touch her and, you know, and get healed because they just want, you know, now, the woman was very anointed. I'm not talking of tables. This is very anointed woman. So they took her through the back exit, because it was an hotel. So they took her through a back exit where um, the restaurant guys, you know, the hotel guys were cooking and all. And as she passed, the glory of God was so strong as she was passing that everybody that was cooking in the restaurant, they were not in the Holy Ghost meeting and say, I want to talk. No, they didn't know she was passing. Everybody just went, they started going under the power. As she passed, she was a very anointed woman. We don't go on the power, though. I've watched some of the videos, some of her crusades. Ha! Glory to God. Very scary woman. Very, very scary woman. Very scary woman. You understand? She will minister, you will be scared that she's ministering. Praise God. Correct, authentic, electronic anointing. You understand what I'm talking about? That's what this woman carried. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not mouth. And you see, so you see, we thank God. You see, God puts examples there to let you know, listen, I have no problem using women. You are the one that have problem. Praise God. And God help you, you have one problem, and God wants to use a woman. And you say, no, Lord, you bring a man. You will die there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will die there. Amen. 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 All right, so it says the churches of Asia, Salisus, Aquila, and Priscilla were women of uh, were, uh, were ministry, uh, ministry couple with Priscilla being an apostle, a minister, or a pastor. Hallelujah. Then we also had that there was a minister of God that Apostle John calls the elect lady. Second John chapter 1. How are you taking notes of these scriptures? Second John chapter 1 and verse 1. The elect lady. She was a pastor. The elder unto the elect lady and her children. Children there means the members. Amen. All right. Spiritual children, not uh, new needs. Glory to God. Whom I love in the truth and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. The elect lady. So John writes an epistle to a female pastor. Instructing her on, you know, what she needs to do as regards those who are her members. Hallelujah. So God has no challenge with, you know, with using women. Now, we can see clearly that women were called into ministry and also the work of ministry. Now, the question is this. Why did Paul seem to forbid women speaking in churches? What was Paul's problem? How can the apostle of grace now also be the one who spoke a, you know, a lot against women preaching the God, you know, preaching in, in, in uh, uh, speaking in the, the assembly? First Corinthians 14, 34. Let's look at it. There are some churches in America, they call themselves reformed churches. Oh dear God, if you see how they, they hammer on this thing, you know. They hammer on this thing and always want to be seen as those who are loyal to the Lord by not allowing women preached, you know, and, you know, climb the pulpit and things like that. Amen. 
1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let everybody read, want to go, can we read? He says what? Let your women keep what? Ah, church now, read now, eh? Let your women keep what? In the word. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. <laughs> but they are commanded to be what? Under what? Obedience. As also saith the law. It was very personal. Something, you know. He says, as also saith the law. Then look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 <laughs> Timothy chapter 2 and verse 11. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. It says, let now, I want you to notice something. If you look at 1 Corinthians 14, 34, go there. I want you to understand, look at the construction of the words. All right? 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Now, it says what? Let your women, it speaks to them as a group. Let your women Keep silence in the churches. Okay? Now go to 1 Timothy 2, 11. It says what well, there? Let. Why? Who's on, who's on this? We're quite slow. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 11. Let the woman learn in what? Silence. With all what? Subjection. Verse 12. He says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over what? The man. Not a man. The man, but to be what? In silence. Now, the question you now have to ask is, why was Paul saying this? Now, if let's go back to 1 Corinthians 14. You understand why he was saying it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. This is not an instruction that is to every woman in Christ. Okay? Mm -mm. No. This was in context of the Corinthian church. Now, if you study 1 Corinthians 14, what was the emphatic, you know, the emphasis of 1 Corinthians 14? Order in the churches. All right. Edification and what? And order. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. What does it say? It says here, let all things be done what? Decently and what? In order. Let all things be done what? Decently and what? In order. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, it says there, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesied edifieth what? The church. So, if you look at 1 Corinthians 14, the, the focus of the writing was decently, uh, edification, and what in order. So, the women in the Corinthian church, glory to God, by their actions and by the way they wanted to speak during the service, were not allowing for the flow of ministry to be done decently and what? In order. In fact, according to church history, all right, the Corinthian women in Corinthian church usually disrupted services. You understand? They usually disrupted services. All right. Now you find out that the instruction. All right, of Paul concerning this always affected the churches in Asia Minor. Okay, because they had the same culture, especially as regards their women. The prominent religion before Christianity came here, all right, were religions where the goddess was a feminine goddess. And because the goddess was a feminine goddess, it meant that the women, all right, in public worship had preeminence in the services. So they now brought that into the church, and when church services were going on in churches in Asian Minor, the Corinthians and all of those places, especially where Timothy was pastor, all right, they always kind of disrupted the service. So Paul's instruction was, let, ensure the women keep silence. If they have any question, all right, so that there will not be disruption of the service, let them go and ask their husband at home. Praise God. 
let them go and ask their husband. Also, he was not saying that no woman could no woman could be called of God and stand over an assembly because his ministry partner, Hallelujah, Priscilla was was such a, was was someone who did that. Then you had John the Apostle, glory to God, who appointed a woman. A woman was someone who was a, a, a pastor of a congregation, and John wrote to her. Hallelujah. Then you had Junior also. These were women. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you must separate, all right, a woman from a woman called into the fivefold ministry. Praise God. All right. And separate the instruction of Paul, all right, to a specific you know, group of women in a particular church because of their behavior and their conduct. Hallelujah. And understand that that instruction was for the purpose of what? Doing things decently and in order and for the purpose of what? Edification. Praise God. Praise God. I said praise God. So, say this with me. There is neither male nor female. There is neither born nor free. God wants to use women as much as men. Praise God. Say that with me. I received the ministry of a woman just as, as I received the ministry of a man. I'm not a chauvinist. <laughs> Praise God. If you look down on a woman's ministry because it's a woman, something's wrong with your head. You are limiting, all right, God's reach and the flow of God's spirit to you. Praise God. I said, praise God. Then also, women must not allow the society and how, you know, people react to female ministries, you know, by women, all right, now make you now redefine God's call on your life. Because most times, I have found that when women hear from God concerning ministry, they will always interpret that call, reduce it to fellow women and children. Praise the Lord. Then we use it to that. Don't do that. Don't you ever do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get clarity. No exact. I mean, God tells you go and have a crusade. Um, go and have an evangelism, uh, evangelism outreach. Don't now reduce it and add for women. And their husbands. You understand? No. Praise God. Whenever you want to preach a sermon, so it, it doesn't have to be with about women and their husband and women and their needs. No. Now, it is fine if that's what God is calling you to do. Praise God. I said, praise God. It's fine. But you must not reduce the call of God upon your life to a subsect because of society. Hallelujah. Let God be able to use you for her. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, God uses me for her. Hallelujah. God uses me for all. Hallelujah. Can we just lift up our hands and just pray in the Holy Ghost? Pray in the Spirit. Mandoro kos prahanda la gasia. Mandala graha soko toko bahanda le boko son toko bosita baba baba sunda la ya. Le to frahanda le gos prahanda kese ke te ke boroti satan le monsaha. Le kos prahanda kese ke itorondo ro boko soko borimo sunda ya. Monda la mason kidi linto sa ande sikta monko toko bondi seke de le monso koton de le basunda la bahaya li insunta kabasti ke sobra ande dihe You have just listened to a message by Reverend Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center For other messages visit our website at www.oikeacc.org Remain blessed